Hi, Mark Gilbert here. In this brief video, I want to call you to be conscious about what you're putting out in the world and to look at ways in which you can curb your outrage. You know, I've noticed that a lot of our world these days, a lot of modern life, is filled with a lot of anger, a lot of people reacting very poorly to circumstances, and they're just quick to be triggered into negativity and attacking other people. Even today, there was an article in my local paper about the fact that restaurant workers are feeling that people are rude and attacking them, you know, and, and it's, it's just things have changed since COVID. We've all heard the reports about how airline workers are being mistreated by people who are rude and feeling entitled on airplanes. I know just a few days ago, I had somebody yell at me at a gas station simply because I backed up to get close to a pump that happened to be in front of his car. Nowhere near blocking him, but by the very nature that he couldn't pull straight out, he felt like he had to get out and yell at me about this. My response in that moment was just to listen to him and let him vent and go on. But that's not always the case with us. Sometimes if somebody says something to us, we tend to have this sort of elevated tit for tat kind of thing where they're not going to win at my and I'm going to lose in this uh, discourse. And so what I'm encouraging you to do is to look out at life out there and figure out ways in which you could stop and pause and develop a sense of response ability to have a way of which you have an ability to respond such that you're responding from a sense of heart and love and care. There was this program this past week that I watched with my wife. It's a recent comedy special with Chris Rock on Netflix. And I thought he made some interesting points in the video. The um, comedy act was entitled um, selective outrage. He was uh, pointing out the fact that some people say and post on, on media that they don't like something, but then they're inconsistent in what they don't like and that they have these moments that they want to be outraged about something, but then that same set of circumstances, in another case, doesn't outrage them uh, quite as much, that they don't vent as uh, at, the, at the same level or even vent at all. And so in Rock uh, pointing that out, I have to acknowledge I see that myself, that sometimes people feel like they have to be uh, angry about certain things, but then they let other things slide that are very much like that. And, I, and he also had another interesting point in his comedy special that I really wanted to get to, and that's the fact that he feels like that we're all addicted to attention. Now, I did a video recently on why are you on Facebook, and you can see the link below. And part of that video was about that very nature that we do get sort of addicted to likes and comments and shares and people following you, and that we get our validation from looking at and, and receiving this sort of external feedback that says we're doing well. And in Rock's uh, comedy show, he went through several areas where he thought that people could just naturally get attention. But one of the ways in which he didn't list and where what I've noticed is that people tend to use this sense of outrage as a means of attention getting. That they go on social media and they get outraged over a circumstance and they get more likes and they get more shares. The thing tends to take a life of its own on and go a little more viral than putting some sort of positive note out in the world. What we have to be mindful of is when we see that our outrage gets shared and we get that sense of validation from the sharing and the likes, does that sharing and validation that we're receiving personally, that which we really don't need to be addicted to in the first place, does that outweigh the negativity that we put out in the world through the negative statement that we put on social media? There's so much in this busy world that we live in right now that could we could be angry about. There's so many things going on, and, and I understand why a lot of people feel a high degree of frustration. But at the same time, we each can take our own personal responsibility for how we react in individual moments. So as a New Thought teacher, and one of the things that's taught in New Thought is that what we tend to focus on is what we create in our lives. And so the question I then ask is, what do we want to create in our lives? Do we want to create a world where everybody is angry about everything, that we live in a state of constant outrage by people where they're rude and mad over seemingly trivial things, but they can't let it go? 
Now, just an aside, there, yes, there are times that we need to be mad and have outrage. There are certain inequities on this planet where we need to stand up, you know, as political causes and other things that we can bring together in the, the common force of multiple people wanting to affect change. There's ways in which we should use our voices for positive change for the planet. And there is actually a, a time, as humans, we're all going to get mad anyway. That's just part of the natural experience. But to channel that anger into a cause that we can make a difference on the planet. So there are times that we are should be outraged, but there are so many times we get outraged over stuff that we need to stop and back up and say, in the big scheme of things, is this matter so important that I need to share this negative post that somebody's put on Facebook? Do I need to bow, anger back at somebody who's angry at me? Do I need to be outraged over this event over here and express my outrage verbally or in social media? We need to stop and look at all of the events of our life and say, what kind of world do I want to live in? Do I want to live in one where I'm getting outraged over everything that goes on? Or can I simply be outraged over the big political things and sort of back up and create a way of responding with a greater response ability. And how can we do that? How can we actually, let's say if we, we all had the intention to create a world where there was less anger and more love, that we had greater sense of care and concern for each other and less of a concern about wanting to catch people doing things wrong and jumping on them about it. What if we wanted to create that higher world of love and care and concern over this world of anger and outrage? How do we do that? Well, you know, every moment it's up to you and it's up to me to s determine how we're going to respond in every particular moment. Sure, when that guy got mad at me at the gas station, I could have just yelled right back at him. We could have gotten into one of those things that got elevated up to just into a yelling match. And who knows what could have come from that. But I also could see that, you know, it wasn't worth it. I don't like getting yelled at. Yes, that's true. But I don't want to get into a giant argument over something that's trivial. And the same thing happens in life. So one of the ways in which we can curb our outrage is to develop a pause between that stimulus that's pissing us off and our response. If we respond immediately with anger, then we're not developing that response ability that I'm talking about. When we have a response ability, we take a pause. We build a gap between the stimulus and the response, a gap for us to stop and consider some questions about the event that's in front of us. Is this worth getting angry about? Can I put myself in the other person's perspective for a moment? Has that person had a bad day? Have they had events that led them to this moment and they're venting on me and it's really not about me? Can I let go of seeing this as being about me? Because so many moments and things that we get angry about, we sense a, take a sense of personalness to it. Can we let go of seeing it as being about us? Can we let go of our interactions with other people being seen as an opportunity to win or lose, that there has to be winners or losers? You know, on the one hand, the guy at the gas station, by letting him yell at me, you could say, oh, I lost. But maybe I didn't. Maybe by not responding and just sitting there and, and hoping for the best for him, which I could only do after he walked off, you know, and, you know, feeling like there, there goes me on a bad day, hopefully not. But if I can have a sense of compassion for that person who was just yelling at me or that person that I disagree with online, can I for that moment say that if I live their life, I might believe or act like they do, not to condone their behavior, but to just have compassion for them in this moment, will that give me the opportunity to not have to be outraged? Can I let this go? So building a gap in, pausing and thinking, that gap allows us to put ourselves in the perspective of the other person, see that if we had lived their life, maybe we'd be acting like they did, and also choosing a higher and greater response in that moment. What is the response of love and heart in this moment? What would be the most loving and caring response that I can do? Not to be a doormat to be walked over by people. Yes, have healthy boundaries with people when, when necessary. 
But in so many of these circumstances, it's not about having a boundary or self-defense. It's about us maintaining some sort of sense of, of inner pride or inner winning in some sort of conflict with others. If you can let go of that sense of conflict, see your unity with the other person, and constantly focus upon what kind of world do you want to create, then perhaps you'll notice that those moments when you have to feel the desire to share outrage will get less and less and less. Bringing a sense of consciousness to every interaction with every person in every moment, and it's harder than it sounds, but it can be done. Developing that ability will allow you to respond with heart and love, and it will serve to curb those moments when you want to express outrage. Good luck with it. I know that we're all counting on each and every one of us developing that response ability and creating a world that works for all. Thanks for watching.